Uh, hello, DFT. Many thanks for such amazing content. Regarding FSR3 on consoles or even PC, I cannot accept a future where half the frames on my TV aren't quote unquote real. Devs are relying too much on this reconstruction and frame gen tech to a point where it will be pretty hard to distinguish raw graphics engine and hardware power from this AI stuff. I prefer a 30 FPS game that makes me wonder how they achieve such a beautiful picture. Uh, Hellblade 2, he's cited as an example here, rather than simply saying, quote unquote, oh yeah, they use FSR slash DLSS. Uh, so we hear this one a lot, don't we, Alex? Um, and it's interesting because um, for, yeah, fake frames, it's being sort of uh, touted as being, you know, not great fake, but fundamentally, in rendering everything is faked yeah it's all <laughs> oliver get that beep out it's all bullshit. it's all bullshit. um like <laughs> that hellblade footage that you are fawning over uh it's also so many smoke and mirrors do you think do you think that's is this real geometry i don't know like it's all it's all it's all, so many smoke and mirrors like like nanite is an approximation of reality, of real things, uh, material properties in games are just a complete, you know, Lumen is nowhere near path tracing. It's yeah. nowhere near bi-directional path tracing. 2D it's, alpha you know, like the, everywhere. Yeah, alpha is it's all BS. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's all like the most coarse approximation that at an aggregate scale with a lot of artist work uh, and programmer, you know, tricks gets to looking like something that we start to see as reality and this is another one of those tricks and the especially with the hellblade demo where oliver talked about the internal resolution and like they're even making compromises in terms of like alpha resolution there that are even further like it's already not native resolution and the things in the game are already not native and they've always never been native in most games especially console ones uh, PC versions on their alter settings might have thrown up things to like unreasonable resolutions, but that is an entirely different thing. And I don't think it matters. And especially when you're talking about 30 FPS, I don't think people are going to be using frame generation for 30 FPS experiences anyway. So uh, it doesn't really affect that experience. Um, but for people who want to have like a higher than 60 FPS experience, these things are just like even more important these things like upscaling and reconstruction frame gen. So I do not see this. I do not. Uh, uh, this is not my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oliver? I completely echo what Alex said. Um, I would suggest that none of the frames that you're seeing on a console title are real <laughs> in some <laughs> yeah. sense. And, you know, I sort of think that everything in real time rendering is like fake or a hack. And there are already so many optimizations that you make relative to what would be seen as like a, anything close to a ground truth representation of reality. Um, when you look at it, any modern game, there are just like so many. I mean, we don't point them out in like every video because our you know, our standard isn't like the highest end CG imaginable when it comes to evaluating these game graphics, but there are obviously so many shortcuts, so many performance spring optimizations that, um, you know, are not really true to reality. And we just accept it because we understand that you need to render in a 33 millisecond frame budget at the most generous. So yeah, I just think the fixation on like what's real and what's fake is ultimately not helpful for the industry, ultimately not helpful for evaluating graphics rendering. And I think really we should be focused more on what the output looks like and saying like, oh, this is a good output. When we have frame gen, when we have uh, temporal upscaling, maybe that's a good output. We don't need to be so fixated on how the sausage gets made unless you're us, of course, but like, I don't think the mm -hmm. end and consumer should be too fixated on that really. Ultimately we're dealing with, I mean, every PC has got a, a limit, right? So. It's about finding, you know, everything needs to be budgeted. You can't just give a game an infinite budget to render stuff. And because it doesn't have that infinite budget, there are constraints. There are optimizations. There is what you might call fakery in terms of um, presenting a good image. And, you know, FSR, DLSS, whether it's spatial upscaling or temporal, like frame generation, um, those are just additional tools um, that, you know, make the the kind of visuals you see in Hellblade 2 possible. I mean, I don't think if it was running at 
native resolution, it would look as good as what you're seeing in, in the final output there. And, you know, the stuff that um, we just talked about there, like, uh, you know, Hellblade does still have a lot of compromises, like the um, lower resolution transparencies, particles, etc. This is stuff that's been happening in games, like, for as long as I can remember. Yeah, um, it's just it's just good practice to to sort of nip and tuck at the um, at the quality of the presentation in order to increase performance and um, frame generation. I do kind of get the idea that this is sort of uh, adjacent to the using upscaling as a as a crutch argument, which you know maybe for the Last of Us Part One, but you know elsewhere certainly in Hellblade Two stuff like uh, reconstruction is being used to enable new experiences and you wouldn't really be seeing them like that otherwise. So, yeah, I, I really wouldn't be fixated on what's real and what's fake. Uh, the question is how good the fakery is and whether it's a convincing and pleasing presentation. And that's kind of the, the grounds for t critique, I think, mm -hmm. which I think was Oliver's point and Alex's yeah. and is therefore mine as well. <laughs>